just to stay in the speed below the rim. Driving towards the outside of the surface, it's a first step. It should be a long corner. there to monitor as the first one into the game so they'll try and get an opportunity to go ahead again thank you all for watching thank you for joining us and still got a couple of days left here rest of today is still from Alcana, Edgemead and from Wilderton Astros and then we've still got a full day of exciting hockey tomorrow and the ball's gone as the Tomahawk shot comes in and unfortunately hits the top of the ball and hits the back of her stick as RTS just tried to take it quickly but it's not taken on the right spot as the umpires have asked it to take it back to the spot where the infringement happened. So going back here, ladies and gentlemen, Milneton with the ball just a little bit under pressure outside their 23. And they've lost it now, but Hati is today inside the 23 as they're trying to look for numbers forward. As they win a free just inside the 22. Free taken quickly. There's a little bit of space driving inside the circle. She's going to try and look for an outcome. And still got lots of space going through. She plays it forward and it hits a Milneton stick and goes over the baseline as it will be a long corner. And Now, finally joined by Randall. Randall, it's been a while since we've umpired. Uh, umpired. It's been a while since we commentated <laughs> together. I don't think we've ever umpired together. It's been a while. It's the first one of the year. Listen, if you see me with a, a whistle in my hand, just run away. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> yeah, the last thing, I think the last time we commented together was one of the Fairmont night games. Yeah, one of the evening games we would have had. Oh, we would have been the Fairmont Festival. The Fairmont Festival, that's which, correct. Which, which we'll, be, we'll be back at next week. Um, but we're at Milneton Festival now. It's a, it's a bit of a clatter inside the circle, but Hattie draws day win a penalty corner as they look to try and get the first goal on the board. Oh, it looks like a lady may have twisted her ankle, but she's standing strong. Randall, you've had a good day so far? Yeah, it's been a good day. We've had quite a bit on show here. Been joined by uh, Keenan Owen for the matches so far, and we've had a few guest appearances by some 
coaches from time to time, but I think the what it's been about today is just managing heat and tempos. And some of these squads have been playing at phenomenal paces, particularly this Matthias Droste side, these ladies play at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, penalty corner comes out. Doesn't go to the stopper, but it's hit. Great shot, first one. Beats the keeper on the stick side, and it's 1-0 to Matthias Droste. And we thought there was a mistake in top D, but it looked like it was well planned as a first shot that Matthias Droste had in its first goal to them. Smolens are now going to be working hard to try and get that goal back. And here we see a replay of it. Ball went to the side and keeper thought she probably had a postman there and unfortunately didn't. Yeah, just confirmation there that it was the co-captain Jade Avenant who scored that one. There's a battle in the corner. And also you were saying, Randall, the players managing themselves. I mean, this is, for some of them, it's their first matches that they are playing for the season. So that match match fitness is not there. And some of them will, which is a good thing, if they, if they're a little bit rusty, it's probably a, not a bad thing because they know what they have to work on when they get to that first league game after the holidays. Yeah, I just also had a match earlier against Westerford ladies and Westerford come away with a win, but we could see some struggles on the Droste bench with heat. The heat actually affecting quite a few players today. Yeah, it is quite a, a bit of a clash in, in midfield there. And one of the Wilson players holding their necks, but she, she's carrying on and she's running as if nothing happened. Oh, that goes strong. <laughs> I would have been flat on the floor if that happened to me. <laughs> So Artis just they very happy to sit back and defend and yeah, just hold the space. Artis do play a, a very unique brand of hockey which is all about pace. Big passes all the time. And the young lady has come off, she has taken quite a hard knock to the neck. Yeah, she's gonna be attended to by the first aid, so we hope that she's she recovers quite nicely and quite quickly. As Molnit is a few, a few stop-start moments there in top D, but Hatiest just they still have the ball on this left-hand side. It's just a little bit too far as Molnit picks it up, it will, but it will be a free hit there by given by umpire Robin Morgan. Yeah, this is the second match so far for Robin Morgan and the first comment that she made when she got there was the heat. <laughs> yeah, nice warm day here in Cape Town and summer's definitely not over just yet in, in Cape Town. Yeah, it looks like summer's going to be here for a little while longer. <laughs> we are lucky to be parked under a gazebo that we may have stolen from Tech Table. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll we'll just say we've got we've got valuable equipment that we've got to keep out of the sun. Well, I'm, <laughs> we'll I'm just use that as as that as an excuse. I'm quite sure that we are the valuable equipment. <laughs> so. oh, and well defended there outside the circle as Artis just they still putting on a lot of pressure. It's still one 0 Ten minutes to go in the first half here in, at Mulnerton. This is played quickly and miss hit, but she's still got the ball under control as. Artis just they tries to take the ball away and unfortunately a bit of a free hit. It's well defended there by Artis just they, I mean, she had to make that challenge or else it would have been two plays through on the goalkeeper. Yeah, and that young lady goes by the nickname of Khali has been a thorn in defensive lines with the one touch shots. One thing I am enjoying, uh, and we're seeing the crowds here. And we'll get back to the crowds as Milneton, big ball inside the circle, and I think it's come off a Hartiest Drosday stick, so it will be a long corner. Um, 
yeah, it will be a long corner there to Milneton. And we were saying about the crowds, it's just very nice to have crowds again. You know, it's, uh, remember all those commentary that we did with no spectators whatsoever. You only had your teammates shouting on the side of the field for you. And no disrespect to that, but I mean, you want, you want a little bit of support from anybody, from a few other people. Well, I'm sure we know there's a few little sneaky, sneaky voices have found their way through. <laughs> <laughs> Every venue. Yeah. But it's good to see the supporters again. And yeah, I mean, for majority, for majority of matches, around at the moment, whether it be a rugby match, whether it be a soccer match, uh, cricket last night with a pro tiers match, unfortunately lost to Bangladesh, even there. Can we not talk about that, please? <laughs> we've had, we, there were supporters and yeah, slowly but surely getting back to, you know, it's now like a Saturday afternoon, you go watch a rugby match or even uh, like a Saturday morning, you go pop in to go watch some club cricket or some um, schoolboy cricket. Um, and then, you know, you can spend a whole day watching, watching hockey, whether it be school, Anything? I usually with a little bit of a scuttle and a little bit of a chill. Uh, Someone just being called over there by umpire Robin Morgan. Just getting a little bit of a reprimand. Yeah, if I was a Milnerton player, I would just be careful in the way that you respond to the umpire. There's clearly something that upset the umpire and He's got to transfer that message back to a team if it's a message and <laughs> ball turned over and how just stay win it win it but then give it away yeah one thing that has impressed me today is not just the quality of the umpiring which is which has been ipt level with liam and ab as well as uh pietra and bianca also being here but just the behavior of players and supporters alike we've not seen any chirping not seen any rash challenges we have seen a few rash challenges, but nothing aggressive and malicious as another short corner comes through. Yeah, penalty corner there to uh, Mullinson High School. It's a good sign, you know. I mean, we, they talk a lot about about ever since the the self partial, and I'll get to your comment about that. But the self partial, when that happened, there was less opportunity to argue with umpires and less opportunity to challenge decisions because a free could be taken so quickly. Um, you know, so, so that's something that, that, that has forced players to think a bit differently. I mean, obviously, like we always know that players will find a way to say something to the umpire if they need to. But it also needs to be in a way that is, when questioning an umpire, it's always just a player, just a captain, and also the way in which those type of things get said. So it's good to hear that you're saying now that the behavior of the players from that regard is good because that should be a standard, that should be a non-negotiable um, if for hockey match, you know, or for in my opinion, um, yeah, well, so that's good to hear. As we another big interception there, but looking to find a way through and another short corner because that was a bit of a clumsy challenge. Yeah, the problem there, I think, is she's got the ball, but in the end, she's she's just come through with the shoulder a little bit, and and before she's actually got the ball there, so. Just, I know she's done very well throughout. You've, you've mentioned she's she's been a problem for most attacking teams because she's just been able to take the ball away. But I mean, she's just got to be careful with the area in where she's trying to get the ball and where she's trying to win it and how she's trying to win it. So I think that's something key. A little bit of a bubble there. Must have been a something that has happened quite commonly throughout the day with this dry turf. Yeah, funny enough, it's actually only been the molten sides who've been struggling with the push out or predominantly been the molten side struggling with the push out. We've only seen one team, which being the Polar Rose first side, actually use water at the push out spot, which would aid that push out. It's quite interesting that Molten on their own turf or have, have struggled a little bit with it. Hey, we're sitting behind the Molten bench, let's not get any in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we're the neutral people here. <laughs> oh, made us out this time and unfortunately plays on the striker's foot. As you mentioned, non-negotiables. I'm sure the those who've played in any size that I manage would have heard that term. If you chirp an umpire, you will grow into the bench. And I think I think something on that, and and I think we come from the same thinking, is that when you have, when you worry about external things, you know, for instance, what the umpire is saying, what the umpire is doing. Um, what a, another player is doing you're taking away the things that you have under control you know I, I Ooh, we, another short corner they play straight over the baseline so it, it's 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 something that that 
that I think is inexcusable because if you're focusing on those things, you're not focusing on trying to be the best teammate you can be for your team or the best player you can be in your team. Now, I'm not saying you must, everybody's got to be the best player, but you've got to be the best version that you can be for your team. And if one of those 11 players on the field at that point is now focusing on something else, that's one less player that you can rely on on a, any given situation. And that eventually starts to feed into the energy of the rest of the side. That's another push that comes through and this one goes again a little bit wide. And she was looking for the roller, but first wave was quite smart. You'll hear calls from the coach saying Hoyo mask it off because in the first match earlier, one of their players ran with the mask over the halfway line. I'll get, we'll, we'll come back to because I'm going to pick your brain a little bit on some of the non-negotiable things that we could, that, that players, that teams could be discussing. We'll chat, chat about that a little bit later. It's still one little year to RTS just day. They had one opportunity, circle entry, penalty corner, and they slotted the penalty corner bottom, bottom left. Just a, a hit. But it's been all Milderton so far. They've had about three or four penalty corners or five penalty corners so far, and they just haven't been able to convert as they have another opportunity to drive forward. Yeah, we are Players, seeing... You can see the frustration levels are high, but I think the frustration is more with themselves and their inability to convert currently. Yeah, you know, every now and then you'll see players become a little frustrated and angry and they'll look to redirect their anger at usually the umpires, but look at RTS Drosta's build up here on the outside as they enter on that right side and looking to get across and that was well saved on the on the baseline. Keeper went out to try and kick the ball and she missed it and, it's, and luckily she had a defender behind her that cleared the ball. That was a scary moment there for Milneton as you don't, one time, you you never want to concede, but you also never want to concede when, just before half time. Yeah, you want to keep those, those tails up and I, I glanced over at the Atius Droste bench when the teacher had a, a back face <laughs> in the park. <laughs> I thought that she wasn't feeling well and then she said, no, she's just a bit nervous. <laughs> Oh, listen! You gotta love it. You gotta love the energy and the passion that they bring to the field. Eh? That's that. That's 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 what I what I what, that's what I miss about being on a in a in a school environment like that. Just that 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 passion that we have from teachers on the side of the field. We just love it. Well, at 20 rand a liter, I'm sure the drive from Worcester is something you don't want to do without pulling off a few more wins here this weekend. They had a tough encounter with uh, Westerford earlier. I think both coaches are going to have interesting conversations, definitely two completely different conversations that the teams will be having at halftime. I think Chris Gibson will probably focus, the Milneton coach will probably focus a little bit on trying to get his team a little bit more, a little bit calm and, and just collecting their thoughts just a little bit. I think they're getting a little bit frustrated and every time they get into the side of the circle now it's got to a point where they're panicking a little bit. So I'm just trying to calm them down just a little bit. And then also just be aware of this counter-attack from Hati Estrosday because Hati Estrosday haven't had much of the game but the balls that they have had they've they've used quite well. Yeah, Hati Estrosday, very, ooh, what a turn. They're very good at that long ball and capitalizing on the on the bubble and the unforced error by the opposition. We see a couple of seconds left to go. 30 seconds left now in the first half. That poor lady almost just lost the ID there. That ball narrowly missing her head. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just they just have the ball now. They'll just want to slow. I don't know if any of them have actually had a look at the clock just to see. They could have just continued down that right-hand channel just to try and keep the ball away from Walton. Now Walton with a chance now. A couple of seconds left. Can they get inside the circle in enough time? I think the clock's going to run down. As that's the end of the first half as Haiti is just they take a one nil lead. It's majority of the plays gone through to it's gone to Milnerton, but it's Haiti is just they that hold the one nil lead. Yeah, it's been quite a tough encounter so far. I think you know, as we mentioned about the brands of hockey that we witnessed, we've seen the Haiti is where they play with this high paced rolling ball structure where it's big passes that are rolling through they're looking to capitalize on any scrappy missed ball 
whereas at the the Mali side they'll definitely be looking to win the small battles on the field that has been quite a hectic one so far in the heat anything that's standing out for you yeah you've, you've said it mostly and i think one thing that that, that hearty is just and haven't mentioned hearty is just they much about it now but one thing that they will just have to be aware of is that they are doing very well in closing spaces down in at the back i think they've got to just be just a little bit a little bit more careful with the their in or their enthusiasm to try and win the ball i'll use that as a word um because they are giving away a few penalty corners uh, for a few tackles that are a little bit a little bit a little bit dangerous mm. um, so they'll be able to watch about that and then when they move the ball out the back i think they've got to try and hit milnerton as hard as possible when they go forward try and get the ball forward as quickly as possible um and then for milnerton i think when they do go inside the circle they've got to try and keep the they've got to try and be try and keep the ball away from contact and when i say con contact we obviously know that Hatties, Hatties just they like to defend 1v1 and they like to defend in your face. So if you try and keep the ball away from them, it means they're going to be running a lot more to try and get the ball, which which just makes just adds a lot of space inside the circle. Yeah, just looking at the, the type of tackles that Hatties draws they have been putting in, it's you or the ball, so play it smart. Yeah, so it's 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 something that, that yeah, so I think, and that's something that we... That I think both coaches will be aware of. I think uh, the frustration levels from Milnerton are definitely evident, um, and it's it's, in, it's it's key there to try and just calm that down again, and just get get the the Milnerton side just moving the ball. I think that's that's what they need. And for Artyas to stay, they just got to keep defending, keep holding that space. But then they've got to just try and be a little bit more, like I said, forceful going forward. One thing that has been difficult for some of the squads to manage today is that Artie has lost their place when they turn it on they are dangerous they did have a little bit of a struggle with heat earlier but they seemingly are settled in now I don't think I've actually seen the coach sit down and relax at all today are you talking are you, are you talking from both both teams oh definitely from both teams but Artie has lost their that's Jade Everton to have had the, had the privilege of coaching for some indoor games. She's definitely a player that makes a difference when she's on the ball. And you can see it there. She's just won the ball, ran the ball all the way from outside the 25, all the way into the side the circle and won a free it. And she was the one that scored that goal in the first half. And they'll obviously be looking to her to try and do something from the top of the penalty corner spot. Yeah, the last time we saw each other was in Durban. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> we both had very interesting experiences at the recent indoor IPT. Yes. Unless we talk about that, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, let's just keep that one quiet. <laughs> no, we can talk about it later. <laughs> oh, that one going short and looking to take a straight poke straight across. And another short corner one there. I think one thing I, I did enjoy quite a lot about I indoor, and I know indoor season's ended now and it's an out of focus, but I think what a lot of things I've seen is, is the level of... of the, the level of hockey, indoor hockey currently, and the the amount of players that are excelling at a high level because of the indoor game. I actually okay. mentioned it to a few coaches as this push out comes straight to top lane. She's looking to take a flick. Good save on the line. And unfortunately unable to convert. You can actually pick out the outdoor or the indoor players who are playing outdoor now just by generally the basics. And that's and that's what, what what indoor teaches you, and I think that's something that that I think a lot of players and a lot of a lot of coaches are emphasising because indoor does teach you to do the basics really really well. Um, it's a game that, as much as people think it's a flashy game, it, it's not as flashy. It, it it it's a game that you rely a lot on moving the ball into spaces and your movement off the ball and the smart movement off the ball. And there's not much time to take a player on and beat a player because you have limited amount of space. Um, but you don't have the ability to lift the ball or go yeah. through them. If they, if you want to go around a play, you have to go quite far around them and quite quickly. And I think that's what that's the nice thing about indoor is the way in which, which, uh, you know, those those players are are able to do the basics again, do the basics really well. I played it when I was at at club level, and the reason we did it was just to try and get our hands a little bit softer, 
um, especially when we got to the outdoor field, it's like, it's, it, 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 and I always look at the analogy of squash. If you go play squash, I mean squash, you play a couple of weeks of squash, you're going to get fit pretty quickly. And it, it's like indoor as well. You can go and play an indoor game and you can get fit pretty quickly playing in an indoor game. Um, and that that's something that we always we always enjoyed about the game. And you'll see, I mean, we, there's a lot of players that are playing here that have just come off a, a long indoor period as well. So you'll see they 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 normally a step above the, the rest of the players. It's, see, Hati is still straight diving down this right hand side. She's going to watch out with the tackle. Ball comes across and opportunity, another opportunity. Now they're looking a lot more comfortable now than than they were in the first half. That looked like a prime golden opportunity. Ball rolled, clean. To the player stick but just a little bit of a switch off for the last second yeah and Mollenton had to be very careful there because it looked like they, they wanted to make a tackle but they they couldn't make that tackle because it was a very high risk one so Mollenton haven't really had much of the ball it's the first time that they really have the ball is they've now got it over the halfway line is yeah, a little bit of a bubble through. It looks like there was an opportunity, but it's getting a bit clumsy yet again. And we are seeing another Atias Droste player on the bench. Take some ice to the jaw. Now ball goes inside the circle and I think umpire is given a free just outside. There's, there's no advantage as Mulnerton now slowly start. Just getting the ball a little bit more. They haven't had much of it in the last five minutes. She's got space, she's running, she's got five, she can try and move the ball. Balls go inside the circle and Tomok shot comes in. And it goes wide and she'll be disappointed that she didn't get that on target. Yeah, the calls of ooh from the outside. It sounded like the entire stand was cheering for that one. Now Moulton win it again and it's a bit of a nothing 16 there. Is Atias shows another opportunity to take a shot and defenders come in. They clear the ball, but they haven't cleared it far enough. As there we see a big clearance, but again, back to a Milnerton stick. The free, it's one outside. And this is that Hatius just day defense that we've seen throughout the day already. Yeah, Milton or looking to put something on the board here and as we say that unfortunately 14 minutes left Ball across the circle and she's going to try and look for pass but her eyes aren't up so she's not able to make that pass and yeah very young lady has had quite a fantastic day so far she does have a little bit of gas in her if she spots the gap she's gone Milton now win the ball and enter over the over the 25. I was about to say off a line over the 25. Matias just they have an opportunity just to actually trap that ball first and then maybe hit it out because they they're trying to hit that ball out straight away and try and clear it. It's something that it's something that um, they must be they must be careful with. Now we've seen a lot of smart play by both sides and some, I wouldn't call it lazy, but more fatigued efforts being put in here. Mountains, what's his name? Mulleton tracking back on defense there and winning it. And they should, they should be able to get that free hit. Yep, there's a free hit there for Mulleton further down the field. It's been one of, it has been a, a match of two halves so far. This ball comes straight through, but well intercepted by Artis Droste and she looks to take control, but look at the change. As Mullet and fight to maintain possession here, but just cheaply given away yet again. Hitting the back of the of that link stick. And Jordan having lots of space here and 
can she get something on? She does, and keeper gets it off. Ball is still alive, but looks like everyone's gone a little bit to sleep there for a moment. Milton come away with a free hit yet again. No, not five, and I think that's about the third time it's happened. So umpire's gonna gonna card her. I didn't see what color that was. I think it's green. that was a green. Yes, it was a green. Very lucky to come away with it. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not surprising. It's they, they have been warned a couple of times for not being five. So umpires now resorted to a card as the players have not heeded the umpire's warning. Sometimes you can become a little frustrated with your squad when you you see them do something that had already been addressed earlier in the match by the umpires and with 10 and a half minutes left and you know that's also we talk about those non-negotiables i mean those th those are the type of things that we i mean when i when i coach a side that is something that we emphasize quite a lot in that, that those sort of disciplines i mean it's 10 minutes to go it's still a while to go but you cannot afford to have one less player on the field um and that's something that um Milnerton need to use use those opportunities as much as possible. They've lost the ball now. Haiti is just to have it. What are some of the other non-negotiables that you, you you spoke about? I mean, we spoke about the the verbal with the umpires. Um, what, what are some of the other ones that you you think about? You now, there's one that a lot of people don't like from me is no contact with players one hour before and one hour after matches. So I don't like seeing phone calls and WhatsApps and all the rest going through because we don't want those distractions we know we want to support and encourage our, our players big shot coming through and is she finding uh, unfortunately not not getting her one off yeah the beyond that also we want energy to be focused in the team so warming up together cooling down together not being scrappy and split up um, one interesting one that uh, coach Tertian Adams took with us to Durban this year is no technology before games. Oh, another ball comes straight in. Could she get this one off? Ooh, crunching tackles and short corner. Yeah, that's first penalty corner now for this half for Milton. So they're going to try and see if they can bring this goal back. Yeah, that's. A, I, I, you make a good point because I think we forget how much, how much we can focus a lot before the game. You know, sometimes we, we uh, players would do it, do team talk, and then they just want to start focusing ten minutes before. But that 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 preparation starts well before, before that preparation starts well before a um, a before a game. Um, and I think it's very important. And also, we also like to stay in our space quite a lot uh, as a team, just because. Nobody else is going to win the game for you, yeah. but the, the players that you have with you. So we always, the, the, well, I used to focus a lot on staying together, um, not just uh, literally, but but I say emotionally as well, mm. so that everybody knows that the energy that I give off, and I always say if I'm a, me to give off energy, I'm trying to give off energy to my teammates, and in that way, if they give energy, I feed off those players, and it's vice versa. Um, so that, that's something that's that that's quite important and especially when you have those days where some players are not feeling good they just have one of those days have a bad day at school bad at work yeah, you as a team need to uh, need to be able to identify that and help them out as this is an area where artists droste are quite dangerous when they make their way to the baseline yeah unfortunately there Mulnerton giving jade Avenant um, the first, the first, the goal scorer, giving her lots of space on the right hand side, and she maybe, maybe a little bit naughty there. She could have fed the ball towards B spot before the keeper came uh, came close to her. But all she did was then keeper played the ball over the baseline. It will be a penalty corner now to Artius Just stay. and this will be a this will be a very, very difficult blow to Milnerton if Artius Just stay can win it, can score the second goal from here. It will be very difficult to recover from that. Uh, can we imagine if RTS puts this one away to pull one back from the loss earlier? Shot comes in, keeper makes his confidence save, but came off a, I think it came off a Milnerton foot. 
This is a real award day to Hartius Trust Day. This will be the second opportunity with six and a half minutes left. One nil is not enough. Ooh, look at that. Great defense. Yeah, our keeper came out there with the with the postman. The ball's gone over the baseline. It will be a long corner. You know, we talk about those moments in a game that you need to be aware of it. And these are one of those moments where we heartiest just they need to be hyper aware that they're trying to trying to get that second goal. You know, they've got Milton under pressure here. And Milton have got to be aware of this opportunity because they've had the majority of the ball in the second half. But yet, so they just don't get hold these hold this team out now till opportunity there to take the free quickly, but she didn't. Has got five minutes forty on the clock. Yeah, tense situation here. Yeah, both benches looking quite stressed. Lots of cheers and charge from bench and stands alike Milton looked to build on this right side again this counter has been something that has worked for them and look as we go to the corner well, it looks like it will roll as well oh. kept inside Young Khali putting in the work there Milton now with the ball and they're trying to get the ball under control so they've got another five minutes now to try and get that goal back and then hopefully look for a winner but out here just they, they've got four minutes 40 now to try and hold out or try and get one more goal to try and secure it yeah Milton drawing their first match this morning against Westerford all stolen this big ball comes inside and there's opportunity now as Mullins got the ball, but under pressure from Hartius Trust David. There's a chance and ball inside the circle. Tom Hawk shot comes in, but there's two sticks. Umpire was not happy with something there. And it will be a penalty corner to Milnerton with four minutes to go. The umpire JD is being super sharp today. And this will be a big one. Hoping for that home ground advantage. Yeah, they've moved this castle slightly closer to the near post here. Oh, that was a good push that came out. Another short corner. Shot came in off the first wave stick into the body of the one of the other players. Yeah, big calls coming here from the bench, but umpires are not going to change their decision. Umpires were not given time there, or up the players are not waiting until the umpire signaled. Make sure I had a uh, few interesting yellows, yellow cards being handed out at IPT last <laughs> week. <laughs> interesting is a, is a polite word <laughs> that you're using there. Opportunity shot comes in and it's going wide. Just no, no touch. It was a small touch from Artie's just day, but it, initial shot was going in the wide of post. Well, the two cards we had in our game were that the short corner defense were not ready by the time the umpire was ready to start the short corner. And the first one, umpire had actually given it because the player didn't have his glove on, even though he was behind the line, so he wasn't ready and safe. Second one, the keeper stepped out to check if his players were ready. Oh my word. <laughs> oh well, I'll, 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 I'll reserve comment on those. <laughs> ah, I was quite happy with it. <laughs> even though one was against us. <laughs> yeah. And Wilton still putting out yes and a lot of pressure ball comes in keeper making a save and it's gone over the baseline so will not be another long corner keepers have been busy today they have been 
on the line. Oh, what a big pull there. Looking to get to top D and... She's just running just a little bit too much. There's a lot of players inside the circle she could have fed the ball to. And there's a big ball in. Hathias just day now with the ball. 1v3. Uh, well defended and it was a bit of a stick tackle but it will be a free just outside the circle. This is a minute and 30 to go now. A little bit of a mispass there and immediately dropping heads but Hathias get the ball again. Was that ball played? Uh, as far as I know it's the still ball played. Is, the ball is live. Yeah, umpire didn't, didn't, all the players seemed to have stopped and there was definitely no whistle. Now there was a whistle and yeah, free it out to Morlitton. Umpire Robin Morgan signaled that the ball was live. Lots of screams coming out from both coaches. One needs to get something on the board and the other one wants to get another one on the board. 45 seconds left here. Coach AJ, anything that stood out to you? Well, I was just obviously very impressed by by um, the Hatties defense. Um, they're a bit like I say, use the word enthusiastic with some of the with some of the challenges, but they were high risk, but they they got the rewards out of them. Um, that was something very impressed. I was very impressed with. I think um, Mullington had the opportunities. They definitely did. They had loads of opportunities to to get goals back. Um, but unfortunately, they haven't been able to um, convert them. Is, is that something that they'll, they'll their rumours chance? But well done to Archias to stay for yeah, finishing a finishing a good day, drawing a drawing a win is always a good good one for a tournament. Yeah, no fantastic performances here by both sides today. Desperate play by both and. First time I've actually seen the Hatties Troste coach smiling and happy. <laughs> She's had a little bit of a stressful afternoon. Yeah. But we will be back for the next match coming up soon. I believe it is DF Milan against well the score the teams load here. Cura Dumville versus Pinelands. Apologies. We will see you soon. Bye for now. Really